We are a creative, sensitive breed who are as valuable as diamonds to meetings and projects. But how do we, A, firstly make a gap to speak with the power-hungry meeting members, puffing chests enough to fill the room space and meeting time? B, additionally, how can we avoid the feeling of resisting speaking up because it seems apparent our corporate culture wouldn't know how to listen even if we did get time to speak and we tend to not speak with commanding certainty? In a performer culture environment, how do we make and find spaces for ideation, creativity, and innovation because we know it's super valuable? Okay. So I'm going to break it down into two things. Is that okay? Yeah, So definitely. the first thing I heard is that there is a culture that if you did speak, it's probably not even going to be taken on board or there is no point to it. So from an outcomes perspective, what would you gain? Um, and then the second is more like if there was even space for that. So this is not something that is in this particular setting valued. And so for this person, my, my suggestion or, or advice will be more to, I say to people, don't go to the butcher to find seafood, right? It's like, what are you actually after? And what is this setting? set of people what are they able to give you and it's it's being able to be creative you know as creators be creative in having those needs met and probably creating alternative places or sources for that to happen and then with a group of community that probably feels just as frustrated you know multiple heads are better than one you know, tackling that problem, because if you're suffering from that, I'm sure that other people in your position are also suffering from that. So as a collective, we're stronger. Um, and then also to kind of perhaps understand what is the social capital or what is the language that is understood in this culture and really thinking about how can I creatively insert agendas and things that benefit me in a way that um they can understand or will be valuable for them so i'm giving them a reason to listen to me mm -hmm. um regina this is quite common right you you would have maybe experienced this kind of culture as you were coming up through the ranks yeah i think um in meetings you don't have to be the one who's the loudest to sort of make the most valid points so the person who's loud and saying all the things often waffles a lot, but you can be quiet and then say things when you really need to that are succinct and good. And then people will respect that and take notice of that. Um, yeah. You don't always need to be, I guess, the loudest, most dominating person in the room. Um, that question has so many different facets to it. it um, yeah. <laughs> And then on the creativity front of things and finding space for ideation, I guess, kind of just got to block those spaces out and make sure that they're kept free and that you know you have the time and the space, mental space to, to do that and not always get bogged down in day-to-day, -day, everyday levels. And then hopefully if you make boundaries around when you're needing creative time, other people respect those and don't try and interrupt. Yeah, it's definitely hard to try and change a culture. Um, one thing we've been doing recently is um, personality types at work and and because everyone's different, right? So there are people that are going to be very off the cuff, can think on their feet, loud, will get their point across. But also there's people who are just as good um, but the, who need to participate, take it all in, go away, come back with their thoughts and ideas, and neither is better than the other. Um, and so I think it's quite important to kind of recognize the different types of uh, people that you might have in a room. Obviously, you know, trying to help your boss or someone else understand that as well um, can help, but can also be quite challenging. There is, um, I'm just popping a linking now. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite books of the last couple of years is a book called Brave New Work. Um, and it's very much kind of, you know, progressive cultures and how we work and how we work together. And this is an article specifically about meetings and how to make decisions. Um, and so it's really quite interesting and could be something that, you know, you could ask your workplace to try around how ideas get raised. Um, but it gives everyone kind of equal voice at the table. 
So there's a few few little good pointers in there, and the book is excellent. 